Thank you all. I'm Amy Estrada, and this is Chuck Ward. And I'm originally here, uh, from here in Tascadero, actually. And we, re I recently moved to Nashville back in May, and Chuck's been living there for the past two years. And um, we just came to the Central Coast to play for Zen Festival, and we had a wonderful weekend. And we're really happy to be playing here for y'all tonight. And uh, this first song we're going to do is called "What I've Heard," and uh, it's one of my newest originals.
special song to me. Um, I've been fortunate enough to meet and work with Johnny Garcia, who is Trisha Yearwood's guitar player and band leader for the past almost 25 years. And uh, this next song is our first work together. It's called Sunday in the South, and uh, hopefully you all hear it tonight, and maybe you'll even hear it later on your face. So this is Sunday in the South.
Chuck and Amy, great job. Estrada, I'm originally from the central coast of California, born and raised in Atascadero, California. Um, living my dream in Nashville, Tennessee now since about May of 2012. And um, happy to be home again for a, a short trip to play Zinfandel Festival this weekend. And who's this character sitting with you? <laughs> I'm Chuck Ward. I'm from Wheatfield, Indiana originally. Lived there until I was 18, then went on the road with some regional acts around uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota, northern Wisconsin area. And now I've been in Nashville, Tennessee for about two years now. Amy, when did you go out to Nashville? I made the big move in May of 2012. I first started going out to Nashville, though, in 2009 when I recorded my debut EP out at the Sound Emporium and uh, started making trips then, but was very fortunate and my, uh, all my stars aligned and it made it possible for me to move in May. And tell, tell us a road story. Well, <laughs> or even tell right now, tell the traveling you did just to come home here. Well, the traveling that we made to uh, to get back here to California was a long one. <laughs> um, we packed up and left on a Thursday afternoon. I worked actually that morning and uh, got home, packed up my stuff. He was waiting for me and, uh, you know, finalized some things when I got home and we hit the road. and. We had about a five and a half hour flight and um, we stopped in Phoenix, Arizona briefly and got off the plane to stretch our legs, get a drink and got back on and then had another hour and a half to Burbank, California and um, and our tour bus driver, my dad, Jim Estrada, took us from Burbank to Atascadero. Now tell, tell me a road story. Oh, uh, there's so many of them I had to had to think on a few. Uh, you want a good, good road story or some of the horrors that people don't realize? Yeah, about? dude, that's how rough it is. How rough. <laughs> well, the first time I went on tour ever was about a week after I graduated high school in 2008. And I was all excited to go out, even though it was just a regional band thing, you know, and, but it was still, you know, making a living, playing music. And left my mom and dad's house. They drove me up to <clears throat> Minneapolis, Minnesota, and uh, I got in the Suburban with a trailer. There's no tour bus when you first start off. <laughs> and we drove to Superior, Wisconsin. And when I first got there, we went to the band house, which was very old and very disgusting, to put it nicely. <laughs> Holes in the walls and floors, dirty furniture, stains all over the walls, the sheets were still dirty. There was just, I mean, anything filthy and disgusting it was there and uh, I just remember them the few the first few months being on the road when I first started off paying my dues it was it was pretty rough staying at the places but uh, I worked my butt off and went through it and uh, spent some time in Rock Springs Wyoming playing and we got there in the middle of January with that same group and it was very cold as Wyoming gets in January and the only heat that we had in our hotel rooms were little space heaters about that big and if you ran that at the same time as the TV you'd blow the breaker. <laughs> so I got to sit there with just that little tiny heater on in that dirty motel room wishing I was back at home with my mom and dad's because I was only 18 at the time when I first went on the road but I paid all my dues and now I'm in Nashville and I've made it to that tour bus so all the all the suburban on uh, sheets of ice going through Wyoming in the middle of winter paid off. With, who are you playing with now? Tell I play for Georgette Jones, the daughter of Tammy Wynette and George Jones. And uh, very happy to do so and uh, happy to keep Tammy's music alive and play it with her daughter. They're wonderful people and great friends and great to work with. Another thing is the, the theme is just who your influences are so just I'm going to just go, go ahead since you're talking. Who are some of your influences in music as a player? Well, a big influence would be my dad, Dan Ward. Uh, him, my mom, my grandparents helped me immensely throughout all of my career from when I first picked up a guitar at 12. My dad plays steel guitar and sings in a classic country band, and I played for his band for six years. 
And uh, my biggest inspiration was my best friend that passed away, Danny Patton. He played for Billy Walker. And uh, they all passed away in a car accident on the way back to Nashville after playing on the road. So there's another road thing that didn't wind up as planned. But, uh, and then Roy Nichols from uh, The Strangers, Merle Haggard's band, one of my favorite guitar players. Vince Gill is uh, one of my heroes, definitely. Uh, Brent Mason has become a buddy of mine, is another great, great guitar player. But all those people are influences, but I couldn't do anything that I've done without the help of my mom and dad and my grandparents. So, Amy, who, who's been your influences? Well, I started singing practically before I could talk and walk, and that was thanks to my mom. And uh, she introduced me to country music, and uh, I used to listen to the Judds and Sarah Evans and Martina McBride and all the all the great '90s country. And uh, those are still an influence in my music today. But um, as a writer as well, um, I'm a huge fan of Miranda Lambert and her style and. Uh, I've watched her since she was on Nashville Star, and um, you know she's been. She, actually, when I first picked up the guitar, "Kerosene" was the first song I ever learned on guitar. So uh, she's been an influence of mine for a while. 